Hey everybody, it's Mia Johnson here, and today it's an in the studio at Buckeye Recording with Peter Achan. So you have been through pretty much the gamut. You're a musician, you've become a recording engineer and producer. Mm -hmm. Give me a little background on what you... I went to school for music and then came back to Philadelphia to be in a big city where I could meet people and play in bands. Played in bands for 15 years, 20 years even. And after many different experiences in many studios in Philadelphia, started realizing the things that I really enjoyed about working in a studio and the things that impeded me from making a good recording. And eventually that turned into me wanting to create a studio that would have all the positive things that I really enjoyed about recording in a studio and hopefully few of the negative things. So your location is in South Philly. Mm -hmm. How did you come across this, this location mm -hmm. and what did you do to transform it into the studio right. of your dreams? I bought a little row home and had bands leaning over in the basement, you know, <laughs> tracking. And started, I can relate. Yes, <laughs> right? Yeah, we've all been there. And started really wanting to find a larger space. This particular building was called the Buckeye Club. And before that, it was called the Bequista Club, and it has a long storied history. It was a speakeasy during Prohibition. And then after that, became pretty much out and out the Philly Mafia Clubhouse through the 50s, 60s, and 70s until the owner, Chicky Narducci, was killed in, I think it was 81 or something. So this is the Angelo Bruno era. Oh. Mafia Clubhouse. This is in the family and stuff. Yes. So it had been closed down for at least three or four years, all the electricity shut off plywood over the windows, no lights, totally black, walking in here with a flashlight. There was an active leak back in the corner, you know, drip, drip, drip. I walk in with a realtor, I go like this. I was like, ooh, I really like this place. This is really nice. And she looks at me like I'm nuts. <laughs> this was a really nice big space with 12 foot ceilings and you know, it's twice as wide as most houses in Philadelphia. And that's what I wanted, the room. Mm -hmm. So many studios these days are little rooms that have been padded out and are completely dead. And as you know, you, if you try singing or playing in a room like that, it's not very inspirational. You have to have sound coming back at you off the walls and yeah, the floor. Yeah, room for the to, air to move. Yep, yeah, yeah. There was some treatment, certainly in the control room, had to sort of damp that down a little bit. But in general, when people come in here, they say, this is a pretty live room. The control room's relatively neutral. It's kind of just, it's just a good listening room so you can mm -hmm. really hear what, what sounds you're getting. Right, and you're insulated, double walled from the from oh, the yeah. street there too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. the whole There's... front of the place is double walled to Which insulate. was just that was just a happy accident. They they built a coat check on the front of the building so that they could have a peephole and see who the coat check person could see who was <laughs> at the front door coming in. Very clever if you're Yeah, but it, you... it just turned out that they built a whole other three foot space and another concrete block wall and then a brick wall in front of that. So it's it's silent in here from street noise. Perfect. When outfitting the room with uh, equipment and instruments, what did you have and what did you add and what kind of like equipment did you was it important for you to have? I always like going and listening to a band play before they ever come in here, so I see what they're using and then make suggestions or say, you know what, your drum kit is going to be way better than mine for this project, or let's try mine because it has a particular sound to it. Um, Lots of acoustic and electric guitars, several amplifiers to choose from. Of course, a bunch of different percussion instruments, um, a bunch of different keyboards. Over the years, I've now collected a, a really nice analog synthesizer, a whirly uh, electric piano, a really beautiful uh, upright grand piano, a Hammond organ. Sometimes there's something extra that you need. And a lot of studios, well, if you want to use this piece of gear, you have to rent that from the studio. So there's mm -hmm. this sort of, there's this price, and then there's the add-on price. I bought this place, I live here, I own all the gear outright. It, everything that's here is for use in your project. And it, there's, no, there's no extra price to that. So that when you go to budget, what is this going to cost me, there are not going to be a lot of surprises. Because you have this great live room, you do a lot of live setups. Yes. And that was another thing that definitely drew me in. I thought, what if I could get the core of everything just done in one shebang, like get those tracks solid. And so talking to you about the live situation was great. And so you, do you usually do a live setup? I tend to gravitate towards those projects. Um, I am working on a project now that 
we were doing it, you know, we did a guitar scratch, and we did drums to that, and then bass to that, and, you know, adding stuff on. This particular person is so used to working that way that they're very good at it and comfortable at doing mm -hmm. it, and it's, it's a way to build a project. But for something like yourself, where it's a band, and you guys rehearse and play out, why not try and capture that energy that's so great when you go see you play? And it's like, hey, this is awesome. Let's try and get some of this on the recording. So you you uh, did go to school for music, and you mm -hmm. have a very musical background. And you know, I'm sure that it's different with different projects. But for me, it was really great to to invite your input as a creative musician. Mm -hmm. You know, and not just a technical guy. My sort of way that I work is as a producer engineer is I'm not heavy handed. I ask or suggest. I felt we established a working rapport very easily and there was an openness and and that really adds to the value of where I where I went right. for it's, this, it's you know. It's more important than any piece of gear or any instrument or any microphone is your ability to work with people. Yeah, I absolutely. found is the most important thing. Yeah, and you're good. Well, thank you. Yeah, he's good. <laughs> Are you going to talk about the bar here? Yeah, I'd like to talk about the bar here. This There's a bar yeah, here. This was a bar. <laughs> And, uh, the whole place was a bar. Yeah, the whole place was a bar. And actually, it kind of dominated when I bought the place. There was a 28-foot-long, huge oval bar in the middle of the room. So I did keep, you can only see a little piece of it right here. But it comes around like this, and it seats about eight or ten people. And there's a small but quality selection of drinks behind and below the bar. Very and I quality. find that that kind of can help a recording situation be more relaxed within limits. Well, I think it it just again it adds to that sort of comfort level of okay, this is a this is a, a space that we can be creative, that we can have meaningful discussions, that we can have meaningful drinks. Yes. I wanted a space that was comfortable to work in, mm -hmm. which a lot of studios are not. They're very sterile and they don't make you feel comfortable. They make you feel nervous. You walk in here, everybody walks in, they go this doesn't look like a studio. This looks like a cross between a living room and a bar. And it's like, good. That's what I was trying to make yeah. it like because that's where you're going to give your best performances. That's right. Thank you for every, all the work that you've done, you know, making my project great. And I hope that, you know, this will help some other people see how you can make their project yeah. great too. Thanks. In the studio, Peter Richan, Buckeye Recording. See you next time. Cut to the fade of one of your songs. <laughs> Kitties. Kitties.